so that's great um, already. So let's get this PowerPoint uh, underway. We'll just uh, go through uh, the risk disclaimer and then we'll start uh, talking about the topic, of course. So once again, welcome to this webinar from Admiral Markets. Please uh, take a look at those great spreads, for example, and uh, also maybe uh, some other things like this contest. Definitely worth it. Uh, as usual, of course, we should be aware, make you aware of the fact that trading global financial markets uh, is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice, for example, of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And uh, this video and webinar is just for uh, informational purposes, educational purposes only. So thank you for your attention on that. Today we're going to take a look at how to use trend lines and trend channels. And I think for uh, a lot of traders, I think this is a great topic because trend lines, I, you know, I think, is still a very useful and popular tool. Um, and uh, I think that you're going to get some great tips from us here how to use them in, uh, in which manners and what to do with them and stuff like that. So, for example, what are trans channels and what sort of trend lines we have, etc. We'll be looking at all that, all these kind of things. So, a lot, uh, a lot of good stuff to come. But first of all, a, a definition, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definition of trend lines. And first of all, I want to thank everyone who wished me a happy birthday yesterday and today so guys uh, I'm really glad to be a part of trading team and I'm glad to be part of you so thank you for your best wishes so let's start with trend lines you probably know all what trend lines are but uh, let's see uh, let's make a small resume of what trend lines are so trend lines are a visual representation of support and resistance in any given time frame so we can have a uh, trend lines on one minute uh, all through monthly charts so basically, those are uh, imagined lines because we we actually don't see it. We draw the lines of support and resistance, and uh, th those trend lines are very important, very important when we do price action trading. So when we, if you trade uh, using indicators, they are not so so qualified with those kind of systems with indicators. But if you trade price action, trend lines are of utmost importance. So, uh, trend line is a line also that is drawn over swing highs in downtrend or under swing lows in uptrend to show the prevailing direction of price. So, if we have a, an uptrend, we draw uh, just below swing lows connecting two or more bottoms. And if we have a, a, a downtrend, then we connect swing highs. So, trend line must have at least two touches to become valid. So, two touches are uh, basically uh, most important. So the more touches it has, the more valid it is. But uh, if we want to trade a trend line, we at least must have uh, two touches. Uh, the other thing is that the more touches the trend line has, the more powerful the move after a trend line break. So there is also uh, a strategy that uses just uh, trend line breaks. So we can trade bounces, we can trade breakout pullbacks, continuation patterns. We also can uh, can trade uh, breakouts of those trend lines. But uh, the thing is that the more touches the trend line has, the more powerful the subsequent move after a trend line break. So usually, usually the, those are explosive moves. Uh, long trend lines are more important than short ones. So that also. Uh, uh, get, we also get that if we if we switch to higher time frames. So if we have, for example, a very big trend line, very long trend line on on a bigger higher time frame, that means that the uh, trend is definitely uh, stronger, and the move after that trend line break will be a more a lot more explosive. And uh, basically, uh, long trend lines have uh, more bounces of the trend line price uh, often often uh, is jumping uh, more on long trend lines than on short trend lines so it's more valid uh, shallow trend lines are more reliable than steep trend lines so either way we don't like to trade those steep trend lines it's better when trend line has a small degree it's called shallow trend line so i will show you i will show you on our next examples basically how we do that on trend lines. 
So what sort of trend lines uh, we use in trading? We use three simple types of trend lines. Those are inner trend lines, outer and long term trend lines. So it's inner trend line, trend line, outer trend line, long term trend line. The inner uptrends is determined, or we, for example, now we're talking about about an uh, inner trend line. So let's say, let's assume that we have a, an uptrend. So in, on this picture, you can, on this chart, you see a blue, green, and red uh, trend line. Blue is inner trend line, outer trend line is green, and long-term trend line is, is red. So basically what we do, most of, mostly uh, when we are trading, we are trading uh, those inner trend lines. Inner trend lines are, very often uh, shorter trend lines, but it doesn't mean that those trend lines are not qualified as good for trading. In this example, you can see that this is a four-hour time frame. So this can be, for this inner trend line, it can be also called intraweek trend line because this is four-hour time frame and you just count the candles, how many candles are on four-hour time frame. And if you count all those candles, we can see that this is indeed, indeed, this is an uh, in, uh, intraweek, intraweek trend. So, uh, for example, if we use this trend line one minute time frame, it, would, it wouldn't be so valid. So, uh, for intraday trading, I recommend using uh, uh, four hour, uh, one hour, and 15 minute time frame. Also, for entries, uh, five minutes can be uh, good. But for most, or for, for, for uh, intraday setups, that means that we uh, he, uh, hold the trade for over a whole day, for over uh, two sessions, then we can use a one hour or four hour time frame. So if we trade intraweek, we use four hour time frame. So this is example on four hours. So basically what it is is in a trend line. This is in an uptrend, and it is determined by finding the last two support points and by uniting those with a straight line. So we are uniting those support points with a straight line. So we have one, two, three, four, basically we have four touches and that second touch could be also a valid touch but let's assume that we have traded just after this, this uh, second swing to the downside. I will show you later how we trade those trend lines. Uh, outer uptrend is determined by uniting the left side of the chart with the right one with a straight line. So basically, we have to start from the right of the chart and we find the lowest points to unite this point with. And then we connect those two low points with uh, and we do it without getting over another candlestick in the chart. So basically, uh, that's outer trend line. So we connect those two swing low points from right to left or if, if we just if we watch those uh, in this picture we can see that this trend line is connecting uh, uh, very very uh, prominent swing lows but first we see it on the right and then we switch to the left and then we connect it that is outer trend line and that can determine a bigger retracement on uh, in uptrend so that can determine a bigger retracement such this was this break of inner trend line basically led to a bigger retracement to the outer trend line and third is a long term trend line we can see that the long term trend uh, is is just is it's it's really compressing the chart uh, we can see that by compressing the chart or by choosing a larger time frame in this example in 4 hour time frame we, we just connect uh, two, basically, again, two most prominent swing lows and then we array this trend line. So first, uh, first point is to the left, second low is also just, just a little above it and then we can array this trend line. We just can click uh, at the option called array and then we would see this trend line protruding to the uh, just from the left to the right of the chart. So yeah, that, that is, this is the first point, the, the, the second point is there, and uh, rayed out this trend line should look like this. So it's a perfect example of, of long uh, trend line. So 
uh, as the inner and outer trends are made uh, basically on smaller time frames or, or, or with lesser candles, uh, then uh, we should establish a solid time frame, for example, such as the daily or four hour time frame, which is basically a mirror of all the operations that happen during the day. So it's most significant. Significant for me, a uh, four-hour time frame is uh, really maybe the most significant because I trade intraday. I rarely carry trades over the night. So basically, this is this is that that uh, those three types of trend line that I use: inner trend line, outer trend line, or trend line, and uh, a longer term trend line. So basically. Uh, I think uh, that the most successful of traders uh, are the ones that are able to determine to determine basically uh, the most correct uh, trend lines or any time frame. So uh, as you already know, the smaller moves would always be a response to larger movements. But it is very important to know how to establish those connections. So we know we need to know how to draw those trend lines and how to trade the trend line once it is being drawn. So basically, our next example, I will show you how to trade it. So there are four main things, or basically I can say there are three main things at, uh, with variations. Those are bounces, breakout pullback continuation, and trading with patterns. First example is uh, first bounce, or also known as blind trading. Many traders do this, especially when scalping. I know many traders who draw trend lines on one minute time frame, and then scalp for a few pips. I don't do that. I don't scalp uh, with trend lines if I use one minute. I usually do breakout of, on, on or uh, of uh, five minute channels or 50 minute channels. If I sorry, if I trade a bre breakouts, but I know many traders that really want, like to scalp on uh, trend lines on one minute time frame. So we can trade first bounce, we can trade breakout pullback continuation, also known as retest. Then we can use those trend lines with conjunction of what we know as bullish or bearish candlesticks. We all know that we have we had a we had a webinar about advanced bullish patterns and advanced bearish patterns. So we can trade those trend lines in conjunction with that. I will show you also how to do that. So we have ascending trend lines, we have descending trend lines, and we have patterns. So we use those patterns when trading trend lines. So I will show you this first example, for example, how to trade the first bounce of the trend line. For the first bounce of the trend line to be traded, we need to establish two swing, this is uptrend, so we need to establish two swing lows. When uh, both swing lows have been established, such as this point A and point B, then we wait for the price to come close or touch this mark, this, this highlighted point, yeah, this so anywhere from these four one-hour candles can be our entry point. So after the two swing lows have been established, we draw a trend line, we rate the trend line, we use ray function to, to rate, and then we wait for the price to retrace to, uh, as close to trend line as possible so we can take uh, a trade. So this is called trading first bounce. We don't wait for breakout, pullback, continuation. We don't wait for any of the patterns. We want to trade as early as possible, so we trade the first bounce. This is a, I cannot say that this is a risky trading, but uh, in strong trending markets, this can be excellent way to trade. But if markets are a little bit unsecure, or insecure, or a little bit, uh, they have some sort of whipsaws, then we stay out of first bounce trade. We usually want to spot a good trend before trading first bounce, 
but that can be done also on uh, major pairs. On uh, other pairs such as exotic pairs, I don't recommend this. So cable, euro, dollar, dollar yen or uh, euro Japanese yen, we can uh, do some good uh, trades using first bounce trading strategy. So connect point A with point B, rate the trend line um, and wait the first bounce. Yeah, Chris? So not to, maybe I missed it, but are you, would you look, for example, at a 15-minute chart and see if there's a, a wick on a 15-minute candle? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. I didn't say that, but that is very important. Before, making, before entering a trade, you need to zoom into lower time frame. If we use one hour, I like to zoom in to a five-minute uh, chart. If I use four-hour uh, chart, I zoom into 15-minute time frame. So basically, it's just for better uh, pick, for a better picking entries. We need to pick those entries, you know, uh, a little bit. Uh, we want to, to to trade basically as soon as possible, so we drop into lower time frame to need pick our entries. So that is correct, Chris. Good. On yeah. one hour time frame, I use five minute time frame to zoom into that time frame when I see that. Uh, that uh, the price is reaching, is closing to a trend line. Also, I will zoom into 15 minutes if I see the price is closing up to the four hour time frame trend line. And then I use 15 or five minute candle to actually enter the market. But I need to see a rejection of that trend line. I won't enter blindly. So that is called the first bounce, but as soon as bounce happens, we, we enter the market. Graham is asking if uh, if you also look at the RSI for that, or if you just trade naked. Uh, when I when I uh, do a first bounce trade, mm -hmm. I just trade naked. I I for example, if it's a first bounce trade, I don't use any indicators. I yeah. just need to see the trend line, zoom into lower time frame, and see the rejection of five minute candle, for example, on one hour time frame. To actually enter the trade, but as always, you need to know what you are doing. So this is not for first-time traders. No. First of all, you need to you need to know how to to actually draw those trend lines, and then you need to be you need to know the overall bias of the market. So this is trend trading. First bounce is trend trading. We don't actually trade counter trend with this method. So we need to see and we need to know what sort of what uh, what average ATR is, and if average uh, true range is, is uh, has been surpassed, we don't trade. So we we just want to trade that that first bounce of the trend line. So actually, when we, once we enter the first bounce, we don't close our trade until the target price has been hit, because we don't scalp on one hour and four hour. We scalp on lower time frames, and this so sort of trading is meant to be. For, for intraday trading setup. So one or at the most two entries per day is, is what we do when trading first bounce. So actually that is that is the answer to your question. I don't use any indicators, just blindly entering a trade, but want to see five minute rejection of the one hour trend line or fifteen minute rejection of the four hour trend line. So, if there is, is there any other question, or we can move to another slide? Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And this is one of, one of my most favorite uh, patterns. It's called breakout pullback continuation. It's the same example as we had uh, on the prior slide, prior, on the slide prior to this one. So basically, we are having a trend line. We can see that the uh, price uh, had an uptrend, one to three bounces of the trend line. And then we can see it, uh, at the fourth bounce, there was a fourth bounce, but the candle was actually, actually a shooting star candle. This is a just candle just between B and P, so this is a shooting star candle. And then after shooting star, it, it, it got some pips. It, it's okay to trade this fourth bounce because it was good for some 40, 50 pips. But then uh, the price broke to this trend line with this B candle, it's called breakout candle. 
And we know that uh, once uh, this uh, trend line is uh, retested, we can enter a trade. So we enter on breakout, pullback, continuation trade. Breakout is B, pullback is P. So you see that actually the week of this candle has retested this trend line. And there are two ways to enter the market. Either we enter immediately after the successful retest, or we wait for C, that's called continuation. And usually the trade is placed a few pips below B, breakout pattern. So breakout, pullback, continuation. And we can see that this trade could have yielded uh, approximately approximately uh, uh, 120, 30 pips on a breakout. So basically, breakout, pullback continuation after the break of the trend line. And those, traded, those kind of trades are really preferred by counter trend traders. And those kind of trades can yield a lot of pips if used correctly. But yet again, I'm telling you, you need to know uh, just just above an average Joe in trading, you 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 are supposed to be trading, I know some time, and to have experience in screening time, to actually trade breakout pullback continuation. But those setups are really really most fruitful if are exploited uh, correctly. So these, as you already know about breakout pullback continuation, and uh, yet again we can use it really to our advantage when trading trend lines. So trend lines can also be traded. The first breakout, you can try to do that, but most, but safer option is to wait pullback, that's called retest, and then continuation after the breakout low has been broken. That's approximately 90% successful trade on higher time frame. You need to be patient for this setup, but once the setup has been confirmed and you spot it, you have more than 90% to be to be in profits once this this kind of setup opens up to you. Already, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great uh, setup, isn't it? The the concept yeah. is great. The BBC. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that is. Yeah, I like those those kind of concepts. So basically, Absolutely. many traders do that when trading trend lines and some on other patterns such wedges, triangles, rectangles, so on. Yep. So, ending is, as you already know, pattern trade, pattern trade of the trend line. So, we have trend line. First, we make two points. Those high points, and basically after those highs, we can also see that we reach a discharge head and shoulders. We had a shoulder up, so and it at the point show and on the left is the left show. We we have a really a nice setup on cable in this example. So uh, we connect those points, point A and point B, and we wait for short setup. How we trade? We trade pattern of of the trend line. So the first is bearish engulfing candle. So the bearish engulfing candle engulfed this this bullish candle, but since this is this is the first the first point, we wait for another confirmation and another point B so we can connect this trend line. After the point B has been established, a uh, point B is basically this retest, this this big big uh, bullish candlestick. That is point B. After that, we have uh, at the close of this for uh, one hour candle, we see that, that this is the belt hold pattern. So this trend line has been retested. It's been established by this by this uh, big uh, big uh, bullish candlestick. And then after the next candlestick closes, we can see that this is actually a belt hold pattern. So we just enter. We can wait for some retracement to the trend line or we can enter immediately after the pattern. I like to see some sort of retracement. So we can see that this trend line has been really, really respected. And at the fourth touch, one, two, three, at the fourth touch, where point C is, we can see that hanging man has been established a bearish pattern and also of the trend line. 
So we can enter immediately after the pattern or wait for some sort of retrace. And you see the price has been driven down to a good good support level. So this is you this is also how we can trade patterns of the trend line. For this kind of trading strategy you need to know patterns. We had two webinars about advanced and advanced bullish and advanced bearish candlestick patterns. So if you watched us uh, continuously and carefully you should already know about patterns. So now you just need to know about trend lines and then you can trade those patterns of the trend line. I prefer one hour time frame for intraday trading and I don't uh, zoom into a lower time frame when I spot the pattern because pattern, patterns are spotted on one hour time frame and when I spot the pattern I wait for retracement in this case I would wait for a small retracement as close to this trend line as close as it can be and then enter because this pattern is a confirmation of bearish trend. We have a trend line here and then we can just wait for a candle to retrace a bit, next candle to retrace a bit and then we can enter a trade. Or we can wait a break of this belt hold low to actually enter a short trade. Same for this seat hanging man. We can enter immediately after the pattern has been established because it's, it's already sitting in the trend line so we would place our stop just above this wick of the of the hanging man and we can enter immediately or we can wait for a breakout of patterns low to actually enter a breakout trade. But both of those trades are exactly executed at the at a bounce pattern bounce of the trend line. So this is not the first bounce, this is the pattern bounce of the trend line. Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah, another thing which also has in common with, uh, with, uh, with trend lines are channels. So basically well, what are channels? Just you can imagine that we have that we have uh, two trend lines but uh, within the same angle. So those are channels. We have a lower trend line, an upper trend line and those uh, uh, two lines engulf the price. So basically that is a channel. And uh, the, the best definition of the channel is that channels represent the tops and bottoms in the price of a particular pair. So those are the tops and bottoms in the price. And those are also areas of support and resistance. In order to create an up or ascending channel, we need to draw a parallel line at the same angle as an uptrend line and then move the line to position where it touches the most recent peak. You will see that, but you already know, I presume, how to draw a channel. To create a down descending channel, we need to draw a parallel line at the same angle as the downtrend line and then move that line to a position where it touches the most recent bottom. So basically what we'll do is if we use some other things for charting than MetaTrader, we just draw a descending or ascending trend line and then we copy that trend line and place it above the top or the bottom. So we can have both same trend lines, uh, same angled trend lines uh, going in the same direction but engulfing the price. So basically those are uh, channels. Uh, uh, we can show you the next slide. So those are types of channels. Ascending channels, descending channels, horizontal channels, and equidistant channels. I guess that Chris will will uh, tell you about uh, those uh, kind of channels, ascending, descending, horizontal channels. You already know that a bit, but I think that you probably ask yourself what are equidistant channels. I will tell you about those equidistant channels because those kind of channels are really good to trade if you know uh, how to trade it. So if we have an uptrend, there is a sending channel. 
uh, if we have a downtrend that is descending channel, if we have a sideways moving market that is a horizontal channel, and if we have a special kind of uh, channel, we call it equidistant channel. I will show you. So, equidistant channel represent the trend lines connecting price extremes in both directions. So, how we do that? We need to have a MetaTrader 4 platform. And once you have MetaTrader 4, you need to select equidistant channel drawing tool. You go to channels and then you select equidistant channel drawing tool. And then you may begin drawing the channel on your chart. So you should uh, start by clicking the left mouse button on your starting point on the chart. Then you hold the mouse button down and draw the channel in the necessary direction. In this example, it's an uptrend. So again, in uptrend and uh, when drawing a trend line, we need to have at least two points. Same as channel, because channels are basically two trend lines angled in the same direction. So we need to connect two points of this channel in our uptrend direction. Once we reach the end point, we should release the mouse button and the channel will appear on the chart. After the down trend line has been established, you will see that the upper upper line is just slightly below the top, just slightly below the peak of this of this uh, candle. So then we move this trend, this this uh, upward uh, trend channel just above the peak. And here is the peak. You can see it. You just left click the the the, the channel line, and you move above the peak, the previous peak, of course. So you don't know, for example where the price will, will go after you connect those two lows. But then you can see that a few candles prior to connecting, you see that peak. So you just move, you just click on this little little circle and move, move this, this, you click on this little circle and move this trend line above the peak. So you have an equidistant channel. So you can see how the price is respecting the channel. You can trade the first bounce. You can trade breakout pullback continuation. And then you can trade a breakout of this equidistant channel. You see the breakout, the first breakout. It was very, very, very prominent and explosive. So that is how we, we draw equidistant channels. Because equidistant channels are dynamic channels, we need to redraw them from time to time so once this peak or the bottom, in this example, the peak has been broken, then we delete this channel and draw another equidistant channel in the trend direction. So this, this really equidistant channels can help you in, in, in your trading. So you just select the parallel line and drag it to the most extreme high or low point depending on the direction of the channel. So that, that is okay. that can really be a very helpful, especially if you use it with the Bollinger bands. It yeah. can help you define support and resistance levels and breakouts. So those are equidistant channels. Interesting. We have a I think that we have a question here. Where would you draw the other equidistant channel once it breaks? Well, uh, the other channel, uh, for example, this this uh, in this example. This candlestick, a big, big uh, Maribozo candlestick, broke this channel to the upside, and then it went to the upside. What I do usually, I wait for the price to re to retest again. I need to see the price price to retest or retrace back to this channel line, and after the price has been retested, I would delete the channel and I will I will wait for the trend. I won't connect uh, a sideways equidistant channel. So in this example, I would wait, as you see, at the, at the right corner of this chart, there has been a sort of uptrend. We have a swing low, then we have a higher low. So I would draw just a channel to connect these two points and to establish an uptrend again. 
So basically, I would wait for another trend, whether it be uh, higher low or and higher high as an uptrend, or lower high and lower low for downtrend. So I would wait the price to uh, to uh, exit of the consolidation mode and enter a new trend. Once I spot two, for example, higher lows, I would uh, draw the extra distance channel connecting those two higher lows and move the upper channel line at the prior peak. So basically, then we would have a nice equidistant channel. Uh, what Someone's asking this? about uh, uh -huh. which time frame for trend trend lines basically would be the lowest. Uh, I don't know. Lowest. Fifteen minutes is the lowest. Probably, yeah. 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 Fifteen minutes for intraday trading, but you need to see if you if you want to exploit a fifteen minute uh, fifteen minute uh, trend line uh, trade, you don't go for many pips. You just want to see the price, for example. To, to touch uh, important pivot point or to break another another uh, trend line on higher time frame uh, if you want to to trade on lower time frames the channels and the trend lines are preferably traded on higher time frames so basically it's one hour time frame or four hour time frame there is a, there are some trading strategies that use uh, five minute trend lines but uh, you need to have at least Three-hour, uh, three-hour trend line on that five-minute chart to exploit the, the trade. So basically, uh, if you trade, for example, trend lines of the five-minute time frame, you need to see the trend line holds at least three hours. So that is why I why I usually use use uh, uh, trend lines on higher time frames. My preferred time frame is one hour for for intraday setups. And for analysis, I use four hour. That is for the whole day. But for for each session, one hour uh, trend line should be valid. Do we have another question? Uh, Ed is asking. I switched to line chart in MT4 and use trend lines. What do you think? I don't do that. I don't do that. I never use line charts because those line charts are uh, used, were used at the beginning of forex trading. You can really, you can really spot uh, because line charts don't have those peaks and bottoms. I don't use it. I use solely those those Japanese candlesticks because I connect the weeks and bottoms of, of those candlesticks. So it's for me, it's uh, better to use Japanese candlesticks. Yeah, yeah. Alrighty. I think that uh, MT was asking about what currency correlations. What about currency correlations, strong versus weak, plus trend lines? But I don't use that because the currency correlations are very difficult to know because there are a lot of manipulations throughout the market. For example, uh, two months ago we didn't have any correlation between euro and yen and uh, cable. Uh, euro dollar went in one direction. The euro then cable went in another direction. Euro yen went in a completely third direction, because when central banks are manipulating the markets, we don't see a point in correlation. You want to have a clear market without any any disturbances to use correlations. But once uh, the market is yet the market is now is is unclear. I'm just talking about correlation point of view. Of you. So I don't use it. There are a lot of uh, things going on with yen and with dollar. So I never use those correlation points. I just want to see a daily correlation. That means, for example, I can see daily movement, and I can use prior daily movement of, for example, yen and euro to determine euro dollar, or use euro dollar to determine euro yen. But uh, my style of trading. I just I, I don't have bias. If I spot uh, if I see that euro dollar is in uptrend and also cable is is in uptrend, I just I don't bother with correlations. If I spot that inverted correlation, for example, that euro dollar is going up and cable is going down, I don't care uh, that I, for example, a day ago saw that the cable went the same direction as euro. So I will spot the counter trade. I will go with with short trade. 
I just want to see the trend and I want to see a price pattern and once I see the price pattern I don't care about correlation. I, I trade what I see. I, I, I cannot trade what, what banks do and what banks want to do uh, because what they do is to screw your trading. Uh, you want to trade what you see. So put away those correlation stuff, those are really being manipulated and use simple simple and pure price action. Is there any market non manipulated? Uh, Ed, uh, if you if you are a trader, and I presume you are, you don't care if market is manipulated. You just don't care about it. You need to have a strong belief in your trading strategy in yourself. And once, if you spot, if you see that your trades are being uh, clear, that you don't have any profit, just take a day off or a few days off and then start trading again. Uh, there are a lot of times uh, that the markets are manipulated. There are a lot of times that other things will disturb your trading. So just don't uh, pay attention to that. Be calm and believe in your strategy and you will be good. Because any sort, any sort of market can be traded. We just don't want to see many important news releases in one day. That is when I don't trade. When there are no many important news releases, you can trade safely. So we just don't care if markets are manipulated or not. Alrighty, I guess uh, we can take a bit of a look at uh, what I have here prepared. Basically, this slide already, I think, has been thoroughly explained. But uh, you know, just in general, uh, to reconfirm and uh, reemphasize that trend lines and channels are great things to establish trends to determine if there is a trend at all uh, and which direction and uh, when the trend ends or you know when there might be a bigger correction going on uh, signaling breakouts and just capturing uh, chart patterns ranges sideways moves and corrections so it's it's a way, great way of trying to uh, gauge the psychology of the market and uh, trying to understand what is going on in the market structures, the impulse of correction, is there a trend? And these two things, is it trending or not, and is it impulsive or corrective, uh, really will uh, give you a good clue what kind of strategy you should be uh, using at that point in time for that, point of, for that currency uh, to be profitable. If you, if you know those two, then uh, you're, you're already well on your way, and of course then you still have the next question about strategy and which, which do you, how do you tackle that, which is very important as well, I'm not saying, but this will already solve a lot. And, um, and yeah, just ride those trends until it bends, right? So, <laughs> famous expression. Um, building the trend itself, this is just a quick uh, theoretical example of how sometimes the, the, the trend kind of builds its way um, to one direction. So, for example, uh, we have an, uh, an end of a trend and a new, new direction is up and we have a first move up, we have a correction and then another move up and at the beginning it's a bit of a slow move and in a way it even could look like a bear flag. But all of a sudden when you connect the tops and bottoms, uh, one of the subsequent moves actually starts breaking the top line and that's, that's a telltale sign, that's a very key uh, idea that uh, you can have when uh, when the trend is actually uh, breaking to the upside, all right? When, when you're actually getting a trend to the new direction. Because that top line is showing uh, the, the, the weakness maybe the market, and if it starts to, well, not the weakness, but the limitations of that move, and if it starts to break that line, it's showing impulsiveness, it's showing that the trend channel is expanding, and then you can incorporate that new price information and expand that channel uh, to the upside and, and these previous tops actually become like a middle line right in here. All right? That's one way of knowing that the trend is changing also. Uh, otherwise, if this uh, would stay like this, a bit weakish like this, uh, there is actually a chance of course that this could be still a bear flag in a way and maybe a break to the downside if the angle is uh, too shallow for example or uh, if uh, the channel is too, uh, too narrow. I'll, I'll show you an example here 
of a real life chart. Maybe that's more useful. And you can see that this is the, the kind of the module I was trying to explain, where you have a clear downside here, right, on the four hour chart as well. And um, you see that you get a first move up, breaking some tops here as well, even this top here, and then a move down and a bounce off that. So you can already connect those bottoms, as Stellantel was also showing, and maybe even this one actually. Uh, but I you know, have more price action, so that's why I incorporated this one. But if you only see these three bottoms, you probably do like this, right? Anyhow, the point is that uh, when you have these first two touches and a lower high here and higher highs here, and then you know, this is already a neat channel in a way, but still might be a bear flag, right? After the downtrend like that, could be possible. But when you start breaking this part then to the upside, that's another confirmation. If uh, if the lower highs and low, I mean higher lows and higher highs before that were not enough already, that uh, this is expanding to the upside, and you get a neat channel uh, all the way up. All right. Now, a channel, in my opinion, doesn't have to have all price incorporated in it. I know there are some keys that automatically try to fit all price in. I don't use I don't use those. Uh, personally, it's okay for me if there's some price here or here hanging outside. Uh, as soon as the price gets back in the trend, uh, you know that's uh, that's good enough for me. Or you can adjust, maybe try to find a new channel that incorporates that information. Something like that is also possible, right? The shallower angle. So that's the the point of that. And also, if you have maybe an overthrow, then you know that uh, you know, this is getting a bit unsustainable. This, this move up is, is great, but it's a rocket, right? There's no angle to it. It needs correction to go back to, uh, to an area of the trend channel where we get support. And if you look at the trend channel in a way, of course, the best opportunities are usually, let's say, in the, in the lower half or, or at the middle line when we get a retrace from the top line, for example. Uh, you know, if, if we're bouncing at the top of the trend line, of course, the space to the upside is limited. Yes, we do have a bit of a push here. Yes, we do have a bit of a push here. But usually, you know, you're boxing into resistance um, if you have a widened trend channel. All right? Of course, if you have a narrow trend channel, there's definitely space to expand that. So some other comments on building a trend channel um, with the angle. So this is the ascending or descending. Uh, one that Toronto uh, was pointing out to, and uh, you want to choose a time frame that you get comfortable with. I most of the time for these trend channels, I'm really looking at four-hour charts. To be honest, day chart is kind of massive for me for trend channels. Um, one hour, I use more trend lines. For me, trend channels I really use for the for the four-hour chart. Uh, or actually, that's a different slide, but. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it is the same. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was a bit confused. Um, you can use then that trend channel and uh, then zoom in to, for example, the one hour chart to, to find an entry based on price action, candlestick formations that maybe occur at the trend line, uh, as Tarantula was explaining in his part. So, of course, the, uh, the whole idea of a trend is just the, the fact that we have higher highs and higher lows and lower lows and lower highs. And by connecting those tops, we get that channel, right? So that's that. So another example with uh, building the trend. And uh, let's see. This is on the euro dollar four-hour chart this year to the downside. And uh, we have a, uh, a pretty nice channel connecting the tops and uh, connecting the, the bottoms. There are some overthrow as well here. But uh, you know, you might want to draw some other trend lines. There is no harm in drawing multiple trend lines, so or or channels in that matter. Uh, there's no law saying uh, that's not allowed. But this one captures the bottoms pretty nicely, I thought, and the and the tops as well. You can see that you know, the uh, even though we kind of speed, it's got some speed in the trend right in here. Still, uh, despite the fact that the price pulled away from these three, four touches originally, it, uh, it still went back and, uh, and made two bounces from that area. So it's, it's never does any harm 
to leave a channel like that on the chart, even though price seems far away from it, like in here in this case, and uh, many people had, including me, trend lines like this, which might signal a falling wedge, by the way, uh, you can see that uh, the upside was limited, it was just a sideways move, and in fact, this would be a, maybe a good example of a sideways channel, which I didn't draw here, but that would be maybe a great example for that. Also, the end of the trend, it's good because you can see here an impulsive break right at the bottom, break of the high and the upside, all right? So that too, the trend channel, good information. So, Tanantha already talked about that too, but the angle is important. Um, you know, less than 25 to 30 degrees for a trend channel, becoming a bit iffy uh, in a way that it could be, it shows that the psychology of the price action is quite bearish. There is little impulse to the upside and uh, the angle just shows that the, the, you know, there's quite a lot of downside pre or, or I'm sorry, not downside necessarily, um, pressure to the, in the same direction as the original trend. Right? 35, 30 to 45 is, is getting better because there's more balance between price and time. And the trend channel is just giving that, trying to establish and show us if there's a harmony and sustainability between time and price. And, and that, that's very important. Time factor, I think, is one of the things that is often underestimated or not looked at or not investigated that much. But the trend channel is definitely a good way of, uh, of measuring that price and time relationship. Um, anything more than 45 degrees, it's just uh, more of a rocket, and that could be a channel on the lower time frame, actually, a great channel, actually, on the lower time frame. But if you then zoom out, for example, in the 15-minute world, it could be a great channel. But if you then zoom out to the four-hour world, it's just actually one straight-up move of every candle almost having higher highs and higher lows or lower lows and lower highs, and it just keeps on going. And eventually, it's going to, it has to stop at one point because it can't keep that, that speed. It cannot keep that power to one direction forever and it has to hook back to a certain level that uh, where you, you find new support and if you then connect those bottoms you have an angle. Basically, uh, let me see if I have, uh, no, that's maybe the next chart but I'll dive into that later. Here you can see um, kind of what I mean here as well actually. You have a pretty good up move here but that's just one up move. It's one swing high, swing low. It's, it's not a, well, it could be a good ch channel on a one-hour chart, right? One-hour chart, it would look decent, but it's a bit steep, right? You can see that already visually like that. So uh, with going sideways like that, you create time factor, and you, the price actually hooks back to a line of this, and then finds renewed support. So that's how you could, uh, could measure that, all right? So in this case, you can see that a break of, for example, this steeper trend line, you do get some fall, but because it's still an uptrend, right, you do get uh, a continuation later on. Um, let's see. Here, too, we, uh, we then have this, eventually, this trend channel, of course, and we break that with a very impulsive move. This, in itself, we have that red circle, the uptrend is over, right, because we, we broke the key support, we broke the channel. Not only is the channel important, but also the, the key support or resistance on the chart. Not only the channel, because the, uh, what could happen is that the channel is broken and uh, you bounce off the support here still, right, and maybe a, something else is going on, like a bigger flat. All right, so you break the angle, but you actually build a sideways trend channel. That's why if you break a trend line, always be careful of the horizontal support, just in case that you do something like, um, like let's say, this. Red is price. So you break the channel, but you make a sideways flat. All right, that's why. Anyhow. Um, We broke that in any case here, but that down move is so steep that it has no angle to it. And uh, we need some time factor, and we got some kind of a 
maybe a one hour trend in a way, but also a bear flag on the four hour chart. And uh, after that, we get a nice angle, and this, this channel really goes on for quite a long time. And that's a sustainable angle. If you want to incorporate this top, it is possible, but eventually this channel proves to be more, uh, more in line with the price time relationship and in a better angle. This could have worked well, but eventually we break out of it. Uh, so, but you could have both on your chart. As I said, it's, there's nothing wrong with having uh, two on the chart. So some extra info. Let's see. Toronto already talked about it, but you know the number of hits is important too, kind of minimum. Otherwise, you have nothing to draw, but three would be that confirmation. Um, not only is the, the upper and lower trend line important, but um, there are concepts using quarter and heart lines. Now quarter, uh, you know, if you really like trend high channel, trend channel concepts, I'm sure you can use quarters. Uh, it's maybe going a bit far in a way, but heart line definitely I, I would say is, is, is a good concept. Um, in, the, in a way it shows where there could be some internal support within that channel and uh, you might want to actually check if price is respecting a hard line. If it isn't, then maybe your channel isn't optimal. If you want to check if your channel is, is really like set well, then there should be a line in the middle that price neatly respects as support and resistance roughly. So uh, some other things, uh, as I said, cutting through price is okay, and in some, some instances, and the Elliott Wave trend channels, <clears throat> if you connect, for those of you who like Elliott Waves, if you connect wave one and three and hook it to wave two, you will have an approximation when wave four ends. And if you do the same for hooking wave two, the, bot the tops or bottoms of wave, you know, that's actually interchangeable, sorry about that. Wave two and four, if you connect wave in two and four and hook it to wave three, you could have an idea where five ends. The wave five is a bit tricky because sometimes wave five uh, doesn't break the bottom or if it does break the bottom, then uh, it sometimes doesn't reach that far because it's kind of weaker. So that's not as sure as uh, the wave four, but it, it, it could be a good guideline. So here's an example of uh, of a trend channel with quarter and a, and a hard line or a middle line. And uh, let's go through those touches a bit. So you can see three touches here and it gets well respected throughout the, throughout the course, throughout the upside. Uh, the upside line, not much, but still two touches here uh, as well. Uh, the quarter line gets some respect as well as you can see. Um, just as this one here, you see nice touches and stops along the way as well. Now the heart line, uh, you can see price definitely using that as a support right here. You can see it's kind of indicates nicely a uh, an angle as well. All right, so that that's one way of looking at trend channels. Then, of course, we get a break of that trend channel here and here, but we can then connect these bottoms, uh, and maybe the angle of the trend is just changing to a shallower angle, or the trend is bending, one of the two. Let's see, this is your dollar one hour chart, 14th of June, so 134. Well, we know that we pushed one more time up, right, to 134.10, and then we fell. So it was kind of like a rising wedge we had, right, and then we fell. So that was actually quite recent uh, price action of beginning of June on the euro dollar here. Uh, did give an indication after that we were going to uh, fall. So the end of the trend, of course, this is an established trend channel, but one day the trend channel is going to uh, crack, it's going to break, we're going to see some signs that the trend is over. Uh, and how do we see that? Well, the lows and highs are less distant from each other. And usually we see then kind of like rising and falling wedges, which means that the bottoms are less less far and closer to each other, and the tops are getting rapidly closer. So you automatically get that falling wedge like this. The bottom 
a break of the bottom, not that far. A break of the bottom, not that far. But the tops getting closer. So that's the rising, falling wedge or the rising wedge, like we had on the euro dollar actually last week on the one-hour chart and probably the four-hour chart. And uh, the whole psychology is that every time we break the bottom, there's no no interest in selling. So the the, 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 the idea is that basically the power to the downside or the upside is, is weakening and losing its strength. All right? Price is moving slower, basically. So we have these chart patterns, as I said, and uh, we see divergence most often, sometimes on multiple time frames. That makes the whole case stronger. A classical example is, for example, the euro yen when it was at 94. We had divergence on, I think, the week chart, day chart, and four hour chart. Um, we see reversal candlestick patterns, we see a break of those trend channels and lines, we see a break above local but also structural highs and lows, and then last but not least, we see an angle to the other side, and we can first connect the next, the new bottoms or tops, and start building to the ups, other side. So if we have a falling wedge, and we break out of that, sorry, that's not a falling wedge, something like this, and we break to the opposite side and we hook back and we bounce. That's our angle and that's, you know, that this is what I'm talking about. The potential new channel to the other side. So this is a schematic of uh, your friend until it bends. Divergence, falling wedge, break out of the falling wedge, hook back at maybe the trend line, uh, the trend channel, and then break out of the trend channel. All right, so here's some uh, some lines on the euro dollar for our chart. Uh, I think this is uh, beginning this year, and uh, you can see we had uh, this was the last push up on the euro. I think when it hit 137, actually we had divergence between the tops, for example. All right, that's the red line. We had a nice channel to the upside. That's the uh, orange line here. But after the divergence, we, uh, we made an impulse down, kind of a correction down, and we broke the channel. We broke the key for our support, all right, and we got an angle. Furthermore, we got an angle for the trend channel to the downside. And uh, we hooked back to that, fell again, hooked back, and you know, we kept on going in that channel. Right, with the green circles indicating the respect for the middle trend line there. So that's how you can use those trend channels. Some a few notes now about trend lines because uh, we have now the channels, but you know they're actually within those channels. There are a lot of trend lines that are useful to indicate continuation of impulse or correction. If you look at that trend channel. We have up and down trend, right? But within the trend, we have impulsive and corrective moves. Impulsive and corrective moves. It's like a heartbeat. Impulse correction. Impulse correction. Now, the correction does uh, last longer in most of the cases. Uh, I've heard people say about 70% of the time the currency in corrections, 30% of the time of the currency is impulse, 25. That sounds about right to me. I've never really calculated that or did any trouble to do that, but, you know, uh, my feeling says that that will make sense. And um, it's that, heart, that rhythm, and it's basically the trend channel that, that kind of says when we could be making in that um, impulse and when can we be making that correction. And the most pleasant trading is basically impulsive trading with the trend. That's the, the nice trading. That's the, uh, the really when you reach your targets fast and where you get very good R2Rs, uh, and where you, you, know, you, you, you have the least worries with your trade as well. Psychology and best R2Rs, and you hit your targets the fastest. So uh, basically, you know, that, that is the most pleasant trading, but you can see when you're at the bottom of the trend channels, you know, the likelihood of a correction is, is high, and that then you might want to sit on the sidelines. All right? But we can use, within this channel, we can use 
single electron lines to determine when the corrections or impulsives are over. And we can expect the other one. All right, so for example here, if we have a trend line here, we know that maybe the upside is ready again. We had an, an impulse, so the next up impulse is ready with the trend. We had, for example, here. Oh, sorry about that. Trend line on the tops here, on the tops here, or bottoms here, bottoms here, bottoms here. Those are great trend lines to know when the correction is over. But you could also, in a way, uh, use something like a very steep line like this to have an idea when the impulse is over as well. Not that I encourage necessarily then trading to the opposite side, but it could be good to exit the trade, for example, right? Something like that. All right? It's very steep or a moving average. It's very steep, but it would give an idea when an impulse is over. <clears throat> so I got a question from Alcana, and he, you know, he's asking when, uh, when would be the key support or resistance um, kind of be finished. And that's a bit a uh, tricky question. Uh, I would say, for example, in this case, that this is a key support because that's where the trend channel is. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, or using moving averages to have a certain moving average number with you consider as crucial, for example, or the trend channel as crucial. For example, this high here, you know, is, it's, it's a good resistance, but it's not a, a key resistance because I know that the trend channel could be higher, right? So that's one way of doing that. So talking about those trend lines a bit more, uh, trend lines, you know, basically could be on all time frames, uh, let's say 15 and higher, but uh, trend channel is more or less what I would use um, on the time frame where I define the trend, but it doesn't have to be. You can really even use a channel as well for a, for a one hour chart or 15 minute chart, but that's when I just use trend lines. It's just my way of doing it, but you can use a channel as well, I think. To be honest, but I just use trend channels for determining the trend really, and the trend lines just for uh, the other ones. And um, as I said, it's really good for identifying the end of corrections and the end of trends, and then knowing when the start of the trend and the start of the corrections. Oh, here's a here's a uh, an example where you have a schematic of a perfect trend in a way, where you uh, have a slow trend start expansion. And uh, tied in with, with the Elliott waves as well, where you can see why that expands because it's a wave three, and uh, you know you can have a very corrective trend line here where you get the break, then you get a bigger hook back, bigger uh, correction, and when you break this trend line, it could be a good indication of continuation. This trend line again, etc. Or this one right in here could be a great trend line to see when the wave three is over, the most impulsive, or when this trend line could be great for to know when the corrective wave four is over, etc. So that's how you can use those trend lines in combination with the trend channel um, with with LED waves and fibs to get really in. You know, this is of course the perfect picture. <laughs> so uh, you know, we won't find them all the time like that because currencies like to correct. So sometimes we're stuck in corrections for a very long time. Uh, the favorite time frame I like to draw. Trend lines, a one hour chart is my favorite, personally. Uh, I like one hour breakout tra trading, is my, uh, is my bread and butter, but um, uh, four hours are definitely very, very important as well, but it happens less, day, less frequently, let me say it this way. So anything else that is new here, because I don't want to bore you with rehearsing stuff, because I think we've gone through three touches. Maybe the only thing I want to add here, actually, is that the touches are basically a bit spaced out of out over time. So what I like to see on the trend line is that, for example, you have an up move, and then you get a correction. Like this. What I mean with spaced out of time is that, you know, you get a trend line where you have three touches, but look, there, there's there is a significant gap in, in charts between those touches. And then you get the break. Now, the advantage of that is because sometimes you have, for example, a small move up, you have two candles down and a move up, and two candles down and a move up, and you theoretically could draw a line that already has three touches, but it's just like one area, and it's, it's just a very small 
correction yet. So that could be a great trend line on a one time frame smaller. If this would be in the one hour, it could be a great trend line for the 50 minute world. But it's not really the trend line that I would consider a, a great trend line on that time frame. All right. So uh, what else? Last thing maybe at the bottom here. Trend lines are general areas, not precise points in a way. So you know, we could get a bit of a push through, maybe a bit lower. Uh, prices vary depending on which, which um, trading station you look at a bit. The trend lines do vary in that regard. Everyone has slightly different lines. Trend line is really, in that way, it's a bit discretionary what everyone else. It's not like all traders in the world have that trend line you have on your chart or I have on my chart. It's not like that. It's in a way uh, different than, for example, daily highs and lows. Although even there, actually, of course, it depends on the time, like the day uh, settings, when the day candle closes, right? But that does, I think, there is uh, the, the Japan, the Tokyo Open that could be considered the, the official open price, I think of the day. If you look at CNBC, that is the low of the day. That is the opening price of the day, right? Don't you think, Tarantula, that that's a clear-cut level or not? Uh, sorry, what, what, uh, what I was watching uh, price section on, on uh, what was the question again? Well, I was, ask, I was saying that trend lines are, you know, they're, they're good, but they are something that we have on a trend line, and it could vary from trader to trader. To tra trader, to trader. It's something more uh, in that way, a bit discretionary because, first of all, the price could be different on our broker stations, and you could draw a different trend line. But, for example, certain things are like a low of the day. If you would go to CNBC at Tokyo Open, that's the beginning of the trading day, and uh, the yesterday's low is yesterday's low. What do you think? Exactly. If, if uh, yeah, you're completely right. For example, that is why I why I prefer. Again, one of the reasons I prefer admiral markets it's because those that's basically uh, GMT uh, time-based brokers. Uh, brokers. So basically, when if we uh, draw on MT4 GMT brokers such as admiral markets, we can uh, connect and uh, spot uh, correct trend lines because it's London time, and most of most of big traders uh, prefer brokers which use GMT or GMT plus one London time. So basically, that is because from time to time you can see uh, misconceptions and uh, misalignments in uh, uh, on price uh, on candlestick price candlesticks themselves because uh, candlesticks do represent uh, the price action. But uh, if we see the chart, the only thing what is sure is whether we use a GMT broker or no is daily highs and lows. So for uh, for traders who doesn't who don't use who don't use a GMT or London based broker, uh, I my advice is to use only daily highs and lows because those are the most correct values on the chart. So if you ask me, you know you know me, I'm a simple, very simple guy. I use Admiral. One of reasons I use Admiral Markets is because it is GMT broker that is one of most most important things for me because I use price action and I really need to see price action itself so that is maybe the answer to your question use GMT yeah. broker or if you don't use it try to spot lows and highs that will be because you know trend lines every trader see the price action differently if I use GMT broker, maybe someone use GMT minus eight broker, and then we see those candlestick a little bit differently. And because of that, there can be some misunderstandings between entry points and the trading strategies. So that is why I advise to use GMT plus one or London based broker. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's a great answer and great advice as well. Um, Makes a lot you, of said sense it, to me. you said it correctly, yeah. Chris. Uh, trend lines are general, points, yeah. not uh, not the precise points for entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's so use guys. Guideline. If you're 
if you are if you are confused with trend lines and different uh, different uh, price patterns because you we all use different uh, MT4 platforms, then use pivot points in conjunction with with trend lines. That can help you. As an extra confirmation, right? Extra yeah. confirmation. Yeah, confluence. Absolutely. Yes. Confluence is always key. Yeah. And uh, is a great help in in that Indeed. regard. Absolutely. Indeed. So. Here we have a, a euro dollar four hour chart and um, with the trend channel but then with some uh, some single single line single trend lines uh, to show you how you can use that within the trend channel for example uh, the very first one where I have uh, the green circle here two circles could indicate for example where the correction is over right we uh, this was actually an example we looked at at the beginning with the trend channel, right? We're expanded here, right? So I added some single line trend lines and you can see when we when we made it up move, we expanded the trend channel, we made a correction and one way of maybe knowing when this this trend is continuing is a single line trend line like this. We uh, approximately hit the kind of the middle line, or, you know, approximately and uh, that could be a, uh, a good way to know that there's maybe this space for us to catch for that uptrend, right? We even extended a bit with a small overthrow, and uh, when we maybe draw a trend line like this, that could be a great way to know that the trend or the impulsive part of the trend is over. And in this case, we actually made a very impulsive correction, in fact. But uh, you know, that's that's always a bit tricky trading. You never know if it's going if the correction is going to be impulsive or uh, or correct corrective. But uh, if you were so uh, good to catch it, that would have been a great fall back to the bottom of the trend line, and uh, that's where we got support. Now we see, for example, in any case, the point is that uh, taking the profit when this trend line breaks is, is definitely key, and when this trend line breaks, maybe uh, upside continuation, or uh, or here are some chart patterns where we have sideways moves, triangles, stuff like that. All right. So here, support line not being respected. And we get a bigger fall. Some, I think this is the last example. I think so. Let's see. What does it say here? Uh, this is a downtrend here, right? So this is kind of the also using two lines. So this could be maybe the internal line that uh, that I was talking about, and this is maybe kind of in between the long term and medium, I guess, in a way. So. Uh, this indicating that the immediate impulse is over. You can use moving averages as well, but trend lines work perfectly as well. We bounce, break here, get that bounce, and we get that angle, right? We get a third touch here after actually uh, we move up after the second touch. So we break the first trend line, hook back for the second touch, second bounce. We have the arrow, move up, still get respect at the bigger trend line. But when it moves down, the bulls take over right in here at the third touch and then drive price right through that old trend line and we're definitely in an, uh, in an uptrend. So that rounds it about, that rounds it, I mean that rounds it up or that kind of almost finishes the webinar. I just want to talk about false breakouts um, I, but that's actually maybe a bit different topic in a way because we already talked about breakouts in a different strategy, uh, different webinar. So take a look at that webinar for more information on that, but lower volume readings, candlesticks with wicks when breaking outside of the trend line uh, are dangerous. Horizontal line break could be tricky because sometimes uh, you break the bottom but you actually do the opposite. You go to the, ups the up or downside, the opposite of the trend. So in that regard, if, if you have a horizontal line break, sometimes it's actually better to wait for break pullback continuation, for example. Uh, those are good ways of negating that risk, which you always have when uh, when you're trying to trade with an impulse or trying to catch an impulse in the same direction of the trend, uh, then if you are you know, waiting for that breakout, there's always that risk it can turn into a, pulse, a false one. But uh, there's a lot of advantages of catching that break, as you can see as well. So it's worth the uh, the effort to identify. To, to identify them, to take them, and maybe avoiding, trying to avoid the false ones. It does take maybe some experience, but eventually you will get better in reading uh, the false ones. Definitely, if you have any doubts, 
take a look at one time frame higher and, and look at how the, that candle closes. If there's a huge whip, for example, it could be a bit more dangerous. It doesn't have to be, but it could be. So let's see. I think that's about it. Yeah, that's it. I see two questions at the moment. Um, may I let the shadow of the candle lie outside the channel, or should I fit it inside? Uh, personally, I think that um, any wick, I, for me, it's it's fine to to cut through as long as uh, the trend line or trend channel becomes better because of that. If if I can incorporate more touches by going through the wick, I'll do that. If I if there's no benefit with going through the wick and actually the trend line fits a lot better if I uh, let it touch the outer part of the wick then I would do that. But I, I would not feel, uh, I would feel definitely okay by going through a wick if that makes the line, trend line better, the angle better, the, uh, uh, the, the number of touches or number of areas better, the proximity to price better, all those, I would definitely do that. No problem. Uh, let's see. One more question. Is determining the trend line, do you consider the wick? Or what is the relevance? Uh, well, really not that much. Just uh, the relevance is just that I want to see the, the most important are t number of touches, number of areas, angle for me, and um, what did I say? The proximity to price. The trend channel is definitely important to have an angle because it should show that there is power to one side. The trend line is, is not so clear. Uh, if it's very steep, it could be a great tr a trend line for an impulsive move. If it's very shallow, it could be a great trend line for an corrective move. Uh, it depends on the circumstances because if the if the trend line is shallow, the problem is when you break out that you could bump into resistance or support quite quickly because the top or bottom is quite close. If if the currency had a very big impulse and a decent correction as a bear flag then that top or bottom is usually less of a problem. The advantage if there's a bit of an angle is that the top or bottom that could be a headache is further away. Uh, but um, let's see, if it's a very shallow correction like this, you know, it's just actually a sideways move the power is so great that we did get a bit of a false breakout. Do you see the wick here? Actually, before we got to push up and move back to the to the hard trend line, and then the next one, the second breakthrough, is the actual breakthrough here. But or here maybe this is a triangle here with an angle of the trend line. So if you zoom into the one-hour chart in this piece, you know you might have some ups and downs. You might have a first a false breakout, then or kind of like a first attempt failed or didn't make it totally, then back down and then next one up. Uh, you know, this is a great setting for continuation, but, uh, you know, maybe this high could give some, some resistance, and it did. It's difficult to see maybe. Let me zoom in. Here there is a bit of a wick at that four-hour candle, but not important enough because the power was so great, we did continue to the upside there. Um, but a bit of an up and down. You can see it at the four hour ooh. You can see it at the four hour chart. So that's that's why it's a shallow one is a bit trickier, but uh, if if the setting is good enough and the impulse is good enough and uh, you know we, we really hardly move anywhere to maybe the two three six or three eighty two, normally that is a good. Uh, a shallow one is good, sorry. The stops and targets, well it all depends on uh, on which strategy you use. This is just in a, a general indication of trend lines and trend channels, but Tarantula did mention some strategies at the beginning, right? So that would depend on the strategy. Uh, one minute time frames, not myself. Tarantula, do you use one minute time frames? Yes, uh, but I don't use uh, trend lines. lines. Okay. Yeah. I don't use trend lines on one minute time frame. I can use channels and break out of channels. So one on five minute bar entry uh, ch entry chart is one minute. So five minute is a trigger. No, five minute is a setup chart, 
and one minute is a trigger charge. So I use only one minute in conjunction with five minute breakouts. I don't use trend lines on one minute, nor do I use the trend lines on five minutes. I prefer, I really prefer uh, 15 minutes uh, if I use four hour. If I use uh, one hour, then I use uh, solely for one hour, I use five minutes. So I don't uh, trade by itself five minutes uh, trend lines. I use only in conjunction with higher time frames. So that is the answer to the question. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Lau is asking, does the main point of the false breakout signal is not to trade? Uh, yeah, I mean that would be definitely the uh, a good idea. Of course, if you if you think it's a, if you identify if you have certain criteria and you identify that as a breakout, false breakout, or a breakout that doesn't have enough power to to continue, or that it's a breakout but fun. A major key announcement is to be released soon, so that might mean that there's not enough you know, market momentum to push that uh, breakout. Kind of like the pound dollar today in a way, it, it made a move down, but we had GDP around the corner and it, it then kind of made a, a pretty good move up, right? So, but, so it depends. Uh, in some cases, if you have a, a one-hour wick out of the trend line, you still get a continuation in the same direction. But I think the likelihood is is a bit less indeed. All right, I guess that wraps it up for today. Um, next week, let's see. Next week we actually have the webinar on Wednesday. Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's because I'm taking uh, Thursday, July the 4th, a day off, and the 5th, long weekend. So thanks for your attention. It's the same time, though. Do you know which? Yeah, the same time. Same time, uh, the topic will be trading multiple time frames. Ah, great. So, guys, uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, we will see you on next Wednesday, and we will talk about multiple time frames, and then... I will show you also how to use those trend lines when using multiple time frames. So then I think that most of your answers will be clear about those trend lines. It's not that hard, you will see in multiple time frame analysis is one of the best, definitely. Yeah, that uh, I'm gonna, you're going to enjoy that a lot indeed, absolutely. Yeah. And, be uh, sure to attend the webinar, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Looking forward to that one. Um, enjoy this one too with the Tarantula and you uh, um, being here. Don't uh, forget to take a look at the webinar, our trading session here on Tuesday and Wednesday. Thursday we don't have one, uh, as I said, but Tuesday and Wednesday, 7.45 UK time. And then make sure to take a look at uh, Tarantula's articles and follow Twitter and Facebook, Yeah, maybe even this investment game. And be sure to attend uh, Chris Live uh, trading. Take a look at the annual markets, great spreads. So you have a lot of things to do after this webinar still. <laughs> exactly. We're going to be checking you. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, joke. <laughs> yeah. All righty, okay, guys. Nice, yeah. nice to have you here. Thanks for attending. And see you on Wednesday. Uh, let's talk about uh, multiple time frames. So yes. have a great weekend, guys. Cheers. Yes. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Cheers.